Hello everybody. We have learned various concepts related to probability in our previous session. Today, we are going to use the same concepts and understand the probability associated with the coin experiment. So, if in case we have missed out on those concepts, you can again go back and see our video based on probability. Now, coin experiment involves the use of coin and it is an elementary event. But why we call it an elementary event? Let's see. We call it because of the fact that there is only one outcome that can appear at one point of time, which we'll see as we move further. Again, we are going to use the same basic formula for probability, which involves the ratio between number of favorable outcomes to the total possible outcome. A coin has two sides, heads denoted as H and tails which is denoted as T. Let's take an example of an Indian coin. So these two sides of coin actually form the two possible outcomes. So what will be the favorable outcome? The favorable outcome will be the side that we can actually see or the side that appears on top. And this we can achieve by tossing a coin usually which we see during a match when an umpire tosses a coin to decide between the two teams. So when we are considering head, the probability of it is going to be 1 by 2. And when we are considering tails, the same probability will be 1 by 2. We can see both the outcomes are mutually exclusive. Mutually exclusive is a similar concept to elementary event, where we say both the outcomes do not appear at the same time. So in this case, we generally add the probability. We have to remember when we say mutually exclusive, we add. So when we are adding probability of head with probability of tail, we get a total probability of one. That means it actually satisfies the sum of probabilities rule as well. And moreover, we see that one by two lies between the extreme probabilities of zero and one. So the event of coin tossing actually satisfies all the probabilities rule. How about making it more interesting and talking about probabilities associated with two coins? Let's name our coins as A and B and each of them will have same outcomes heads and tails. Now in order to know the possible outcomes from the event of tossing two coins, what we'll do is we'll group outcome from coin A with the outcome from coin B and this particular set will be the outcome of tossing two coins. So let's say upon first time tossing, we get heads on both the coins that is H and H. So we'll write H comma H. Upon second time tossing, we get heads from coin A and tails from coin B. Then we'll write H comma T. Similarly, we can write all the possible outcomes. So you can go ahead and try tossing two coins and see if there are any more possible outcomes that can appear. And you will see that there are only four outcomes that are possible. Now there is a faster way of actually calculating the total possible outcomes. We know that there are two outcomes of a coin tossing, heads and tails. So if we are tossing it only once, then we write it as 2 raised to power 1, which is equal to 2. So the power actually signifies the number of times events take place and the base actually tells us the number of outcomes of an event. Similarly, if coin tossing is happening twice, or two coins are tossed just like in this case, then we'll write it as 2 raised to power 2, which is equal to 2 into 2 equal to 4. So we might say why multiplication and why not 2 plus 2. The reason is we know that outcomes of a coin are mutually exclusive in nature. That is, when one appears, the other will not appear. But when we are tossing two coins, this event of tossing two coins are actually independent of each other which means whatever outcome will appear on coin A, it will not interfere with the appearance of outcome from coin B. So whenever it is independent event, we have to multiply. Similarly, if there were three coins, let's say coin C, which will again have outcome heads and tails, then the total possible outcomes will be 2 raised to power 3 equal to 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 2 equal to 8 and not 2 plus 2 plus 2 equal to 6. Similarly, in case of a die, we know that there are six sides to one die. So these are the six possible outcomes. It is nothing but six raised to power one. Similarly, if we are throwing two die, then we'll multiply the outcomes from both. 
and three dies again it will be six multiplied by six multiplied by six equal to six cube so we have to remember this particular method in order to calculate the total possible outcomes faster now suppose we were to find out the probability of getting exactly one head upon tossing two coins so how will we go about it so we know that there are total of four possible outcomes and we can see in outcome number two and outcome number three we have exactly one head so the probability is two out of four that is one by two we can certainly not take the outcome number one because there are two heads in the first outcome similarly if we were to find the probability of exactly one tail instead then we can see that we have one tail in outcome number two and in outcome number three so the probability is again going to be one by two and we certainly cannot take fourth outcome because again we have two tails in it in the same way we can work out probabilities associated with three coins and we can play around all the possible combinations and figure out the probabilities associated with them now let's go ahead and make a checklist of what we learned in this session